Okay, thanks everybody for coming. Um, I had the luxury of going to Trinidad and Tobago uh, in December to go to one of the industrial engineering conferences down there with the Society of Caribbean Industrial Engineers. I think I got that right. Um, so that got me thinking a little bit about islands and development, and you heard Sula talk about uh, opportunities to look at, you know, value added and value stream mapping and some of the principles of industrial engineering to uh, island life and society and developing their economy. So kind of got to thinking about that. I like to travel, so I've been to quite a few different islands and they have its own unique perspective because they're isolated and they have um, challenges that are there, but they're also beautiful and have wonderful places to visit. And um, so I've been, had the luxury of going to some very interesting places. Uh, anyone been up to some of these places before? Where have you been? Huh? Puerto Rico? Yeah. You're supposed to be in Puerto Rico, right, for this conference. Uh, unfortunately, maybe we'll make it back there sometime. So I've been through a lot of different islands and gotten different perspectives, and my, uh, my process hat turns on every time I'm there, and I think about some of the issues and, and inefficiencies that I've run across. So I just want to talk about that a little bit and then talk about some work I'm doing when I go on vacation and travel, how to try to provide some of these skills to the places I visit. So what are some of those challenges for a lot of island nations? I found this at one of the papers that was put out by the University of Guam. Guam is over kind of close to Japan. It's uh, one of these weird relationships with the United States and um, I'll talk about that a little bit here. So what they just, they listed out here are some of the topics that they wanted to talk about in their um, presentation and in their conference. Uh, use the use of natural resources, land use and management, sustainable businesses, climate change and energy. And so you look at that list and um, how many of you have worked on some topics that might relate to some of these uh, areas? Has anyone done any work or research on some of these topics? Uh, sea life rehabilitation, Agriculture of limited lands, uh, reuse industry, wastewater treatment. These are all topics that may pertain to some of the engineering work you might be looking at or doing. So there's nothing necessarily unique, but there are uh, opportunities here to apply our skills to these areas. So I did a little bit of work in the US around food production distribution, uh, erosion in terms of uh, replanting mangroves, things like that there's more efficient ways to do that. Uh, reducing dependence on fossil fuels by looking at energy reduction opportunities. Uh, solid waste, hazardous waste management. I work in uh, Portland. I'm a um, Lean Six Sigma consultant, but I also run a nonprofit that's based around recycling. So there's a lot of challenges we have, even in um, more mature uh, areas where we've had a system for many decades, we still have many challenges and problems. In fact, we can't even ship our recycling to China anymore because it's so contaminated and the defect rate is so high. So, um, and we're pretty far advanced in our recycling program. So there, we have our own challenges here. And I'm not highlighting like this, these are unique challenges for islands. This is just some very common ones and similar ones that our skill sets can assist with. So I just want to touch on one around tourism because that's something that I, I notice right away when I, when I go on vacation. So one thing obviously is going to the beach and you see trash. And so that's a, that's a pretty obvious one. And so as a, uh, for a com country that is looking to develop their, their tourism, that's probably a, a good opportunity to start with the beach cleanups and making sure that people come to the beach and that's not the first site they see is, is trash. And that's not necessarily because the island is um, generating the trash. It's a lot of times it's coming in from somewhere else and it's showing up on the beach. So uh, not necessarily their fault, it's just something they have to deal with. And so that's an opportunity we've seen almost most of the places I've gone. Um, this is in, this, so this was uh, St. Croix, I believe. This is Crete and um, what was the challenge? The driving, yes. Uh, so we had a hard time finding signage of where to get gas. And so we were driving around to pretty remote parts of the island and uh, there was no signs like, you know, 25 miles to the next gas station, you know, get gas here. There's nothing like that. And so we almost ran out of gas 
because we couldn't find signs to say where the next gas station was. So you had to stop and ask people and try to navigate. So it wasn't the best experience from a tourist perspective when, uh, with the lack of signage. And that was, that's a pretty big um, opportunity. And, and we talk about that in process improvement is make things visual and obvious and clear with signage. Uh, that seems to be lacking in a lot of places. This is a beautiful beach, also in Crete. Uh, but when you got up close, the plastic debris was just proliferated this entire area. And so we got in the water to come out and the plastic was all on your swimsuit. And so even though it looked from afar really beautiful, it got up close and there was a lot of issues. And again, that may not be that country's issue for, uh, specifically, but it's, it's showing up on their beaches. Uh, this was a uh, war barracks in uh, Vieques, and we spent hours looking for them. And they're set up to be hidden, because that's what they're designed for, but they're not used anymore, and they're a tourist attraction. But we could not find any signs of where to go to go find them. And so we drove around back and forth a couple times, and then finally saw one little sign that was uh, worn out, and it was facing like a very, it was not facing the main traffic, it was facing like someone coming from the beach and it was like you know worn out and you could really we had to stop and get up really close to it and, oh it's a barracks okay let's go down this this path and so finally we found them and it was a really good experience once we got there but I, again the signage was severely lacking if this is something that you're attracting people attracting people to and so how many people have come to the island and looked for the barracks and given up and, and left uh, this was on Ma uh, Maui and they had a little nice little swimming pool area, but there was no signs to go uh, down there. We, we had to stop and saw some cars parked and our map said there was something there and we had to look, at, but that was all, you had to climb through there and walk down this little dirt trail. To, it would have been nice to have a little sign or something that said, you know, beach area. And I get that sometimes you might not want to promote all your attractions, but it looked like something they were trying to promote, but there was no sign there. So we, it was one of those things we almost just continued on and drove past and, and had a good experience, but could have easily over, overcome that. So lots of opportunities like that, that you know, visuals and, and signals. And, and this is the, the probably the, the one that was the most frustrating was this black beach in, um, this is also Vegas. I'm not trying to pick on them, but I went there a couple times, so I have a couple of examples. But the first time I was looking for this black beach that was on the map and uh, we drove past this point and there was nothing in, and the first trip, we didn't find it. And I, we just gave up on it because we couldn't find it. Second time, we finally, I was looking up on websites, I was looking for like hints on where to go, and then saw like, it was this, this blue arrow was on the side of the road. And you passed by and you stopped and I went back and I said, maybe this blue arrow has something. And then you walk a little bit further in there and they say, play a negra. Uh, and so you start saying, okay, I think we're on the right track now. And so the second trip going there, we finally found this beach. And it was beautiful and it was wonderful once you walked down this nice little uh, green trail. And, uh, but again, it was an experience that, for, if tourism is important, then that would be something you might want to highlight a little bit better there. Um, so really, just I always think about, uh, ha has the customer experience been incorporated in and that's something we have to always think about in our improvement work, right, is what is the customer voice and what is value to them? And so uh, I always feel like if someone from the tourism industry could come along with me, I could, they could see the frustration and struggles we have and then probably come up with some really simple ideas to make that easier. And so how is their voice being heard? And so anyone else have any examples or situations that, uh, any uh, problems or frustrations on some of their travels? That, they could have applied their industrial engineering or systems engineering skills to. Nothing on hand. Okay. And we have learned uh, some tourist in Puerto Rico looking for the green card. Yeah. That when they enter, I've never been. I mean, I've heard of it, but I've never been. <laughs> but when I enter, they said that when they enter, they don't know where to go. Right? Yeah. Signage is just, yeah, I think it's, um, and you do that when you go into a manufacturing site, you go into any area like that, it's like, what process is this? What workstation is this? What product line is this? Uh, sometimes that's missing and it hidden. And so a lot of my consulting work, that's the same thing. It's like, let's label this. It's easy for you. you you've been here, you know it. But for, you have to experience someone new coming in, 
an employee for the first time, a volunteer coming into your nonprofit, what is their experience? And usually it's, it's a struggle and they have to go find somebody and someone has to tell them the whole, a long story about what's going on. And how do you, how do you make that simpler? So, so uh, here's a good example. Also, I guess I wanted to balance it out here. This is a Sierra tree, and um, it had multiple signs to it. There was a nice little welcome center with pictures and history, and then you have this giant, multi, I don't remember how old it is, a couple hundred years, I think. Uh, but they had signs all along the way, and there's directions, and, and it was very easy to find, and very easy to go up to, get some pictures, and leave, so a really good experience. Uh, and this is kind of the right way to do it. Uh, really good example. Okay, so, so, so looking at, you know, just process of growth, my background's in more Lean and Six Sigma, um, and I do, I've worked a lot in, my, in the past with industrial engineers. So I looked up at the IASE chapters and members to just see what kind of education and uh, opportunities are there for people who live and, and work on the islands. So I found four chapters, and maybe you guys know of other ones out there that are based on an island, the Dominican Republic, Indonesia, Philippines, and Puerto Rico. Um, and then members were from this island. There was uh, Cyprus, Fiji, Haiti, Jamaica, Trinidad, and Tobago. Any others people know about? Does anyone know other people who might be those members? There's just like one or two, so it's not that many. So it kind of tells me that there, uh, maybe there's some structure here on these islands, and maybe something over here, but there's hundreds of different islands, and so uh, maybe they're not getting the opportunities or the education to see some uh, ways to analyze and look at some of those opportunities. So there is some activity going on in Jamaica. Um, this is Tamar Nelson. Has anyone met Tamar besides Scylla? So she uh, works, she has a master's in ISC from University of West Indies. She is Lean Six Sigma certified and certified energy manager. So she does some sustainability work. Uh, and she's had a lot of experience with some Japanese consultants around the Toyota production system. Uh, and she uh, is in charge of the Jamaica Productivity Center, which has um, uh, a goal of improving the national productivity and creating a productivity conscious culture. So they're doing stuff with public education and capacity building and benchmarking and best practices. And here is a, a, a booth that they set up for, for high school students to learn problem solving skills and, and go through like a, I think they did plan to check out education. And this student group was working on eliminating paper waste. So getting them engaged with projects at a, a younger level, I don't even think we do that in the United States very much. So there's a lot of good work there. Uh, I mentioned I went to Trinidad and Tobago for the Industrial Engineering Management Conference in December. And I went through and taught two workshops. Uh, one is Intro to Lean Six Sigma, and the other one is Lean and Green. And so, um, so if you guys have, uh, you already have this training as part of the curriculum for industrial engineering? Um, not exactly. Okay. It's done um, theoretically. Okay. So maybe some workshops in the past like this, or? We actually have one. <laughs> What's so that? We actually have one, the first one, this week. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Great. Yeah. Excellent. So tomorrow we'll have um, high school students there, and then I go to tomorrow, tomorrow to see them okay. in Jamaica. And on Thursday, I'll be to the industrial engineering students and put them in the shop. Okay. Yeah. Oh, great. So yeah, just trying to, but so, as I'm going to new places, I'm, I'm trying to not just be a tourist, but maybe try to do some education while I'm there. Um, be more fun for me too, and then get to engage there. Anyone else know of any other activity like that with some of the um, ISE groups or chapters or anything you've heard about or read about with other islands doing either industrial engineering, systems engineering, lean, Six Sigma process improvements? I imagine Puerto Rico has some stuff. Um, What's that? Okay. So you guys have the industrial engineering program, yes. right? Okay. Um, so. I know that at least for for our chapter, we sometimes do outreach to certain high schools, and okay. we do like workshops for them. And sometimes we'll do like um, process improvement, like we'll give them some Legos and tell them, oh, build this kind of structure, and then okay, now try to make it so that. Process so 
And I think that helps that you guys have a program there where you can pull on students to go assist with some of that uh, training and education. Um, yeah, and so for other islands that don't have an industrial engineering program or access to that training, then um, everyone's making improvements. So it's not like you can't make improvements in, in how things operate without having a program or industrial engineering program, but it sure helps when you have a broader skill set and, and more advanced training than than just kind of figuring out and trying out some stuff, right? So it's about more the scientific approach around that and having access to exposure to tools and, and techniques that might be uh, more effective and more uh, able to handle some challenges. So I think that's the difficulty is, is trying to get some of that education out to different areas. Can I ask a question? Do you sure. Do we all go into these schools or do you invite these students on campus? So Sometimes we'll go to schools and it'll be like a day where we'll tell them about like the different kinds of engineering we have at the university and we'll do like little workshop for each like engineering and sometimes like if we do like many like university fairs that they'll come to our college to see like what they're interested in, we'll set up a workshop as well. Our biggest event is actually well it's things that it's not ours, we're invited to it because they invite <coughs> every single um, engineering department to come to that event to organize a limited engineering organization. And we are usually the most chosen to present what industrial engineering is to high school students who are interested in it. But lately, our director, our department director, has talked to us to give us all the resources needed for us to go to high school, like to the high schools or to elementary schools. Outreach to students mm -hmm. and that would be like organizations, um, fun dynamics, so they can get interested in what is most really mm -hmm. So, um, this is my next project. Um, I got a question for you. Where is the Federated States of Micronesia? Who thinks it's uh, A? A couple? Okay. Who thinks it's B? How about, who thinks C? We'll see. How about D? Okay, so we got a, a variety of answers here. <laughs> it's A. It's about halfway between uh, Hawaii and uh, Philippines area. Uh, they're, the, Micronesia was settled about 4,000 years ago. There's 607 islands spread out over about 2,700 kilometers or 1,700 miles. So it's very small islands spread out really far. And these are the four states. Uh, and they've had different ownership over the years or control from Spain, Germany, and Japan. It was a very strategic area in World War I and World War II. And so it kind of got stuck in the middle of a major global war. Uh, there was a treaty put together, a trust put together after World War II that the U.S. would take over and try to promote the economic advancement and self-sufficiency for the people of the islands. In 1986, they um, signed a compact of free association with the U.S. We provide military defense grant funds and federal program assistance to them, and we provide about $100 million a year to support their development efforts. Um, and that goes through 2023, but there's always, every time that comes up, there's this decision, like there's, um, there's fear that it's gonna go away someday. And so they're trying to figure out ways to become more self-sufficient and develop their own economy. So I had done some research when I was doing some sustainability work, uh, and I found it really intriguing. And then um, the situation is that US citizens can stay indefinitely if they have a valid passport, and <coughs> FSM citizens are allowed to live, work, and study in the U.S. without a visa. And so it's kind of this relationship. It may be similar to Puerto Rico. I'm not sure the rules, but a little different. It's not indefinite. And in Puerto Rico, you can't stay whatever you want, and because it's a U.S. territory in the United States, and okay. they have to come up both, and not a free association like in the United States. Okay. All right. So within this 
chain of islands, there's four states. Koh Shrai is the one I'll be visiting as of Saturday. My flight takes off. Uh, they are, this island is supported primarily by the government. That's the biggest employer. And that's because of the money that they're getting from the US to build that infrastructure. They do have fishing and farming as a main source, but a lot of their uh, manufacturing has been uh, replaced by imports, lower cost imports. And so um, they do have some tourism opportunities with scuba diving, but they're trying to figure out ways to develop their economy a little better. They use the US dollar and they speak English in the business, business and government settings. Um, so there was a, a company there called Green Banana Paper. I'll show you a little video of what they do. This is the company I'm going to go help out with. They put a call, I found out about them and they put a, a call for volunteers to come visit and teach them something. And I said, would you like to learn about lean and six and five? <laughs> yes. I said, if you can get here, we have a place for you to stay. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. So I thought it was really cool because of the, the two things. One is they need to develop their own economy, right? And they have a natural resource that was going unused and they found a, a market for that. So they employ about 25 people, I think, right now on the island. There's about 6,000 people that live on the island. Um, and so um, how do you get to the island? Well, this is my flight schedule. So on Saturday, I leave Portland to go to San Francisco, and then I stop at Honolulu, and then I have a layover overnight, and then I get up the next morning and go to the Marshall Islands, and then I go to um, Pompeii, and then I 
think that's the last stop before Coach Ride. So, uh, and then you cross the international date line, and so I leave Saturday and I get there Sunday or Monday afternoon. Um, but it's actually more like a, a whole day of travel. Or almost two days. <coughs> so it's three no days. Huh? No direct flight, yeah. There's only one airline that goes to the to the island. So the problem is when I go back, if you miss a flight, you have to wait a couple days. So <laughs> there's no like catch the next flight. That would be okay. At least there's direct flights though, but I'm assuming you're gonna have problems here is where you miss the flight. If anybody has a plan to swim, can you can start right now. Yeah. <laughs> So there is a flight impact there. Every trip I take, though, I, I do a carbon offset for any travel I do. So, um, so there's a there's a, a environmental impact there for travel. So what am I going to do there? Um, work with the, the team and the management to improve their business. I'll be there about six weeks. Um, understand some of these challenges, the sustainable development challenges I mentioned. I know they've got probably challenges around sea level rise, um, some of the economic things. Maybe there's government. Opportunities to make that more efficient. Um, also, I want to be a, a tourist and probably find some signage problems. I'm guessing, just a guess. Uh, surf and relax, and then uh, I'm gonna try to document what I'm doing on my Instagram feed. But next year, I'll also put in for a, a presentation to tell you what I actually did. Uh, so I, the main thing I want to talk about is: Do you feel that you have the skills to be able to help with some of these challenges? whether it's in the islands or uh, just in your local area or country to address sustainability. Um, hopefully a lot of these things you can see where your skills can be useful or helpful. Um, so any questions? That in the case of Vieques, I don't know if you're studying that far and we have a problem with the contamination because yep. the US based United States more they more like there is floating bombs during several years and then we are having that problem because we need to clean those beaches. Yep. I think a month ago one of those that bombs floated. Oh no. So that's a problem and but right now we have they say. Wow. Yeah, and so yeah, that's a <laughs> yeah, I read the history on that and that's uh, and so um, just like that, the reason some of that money the U.S. is giving is because a lot of those islands were used for nuclear testing sites, and so there's contamination from weaponry and stuff like that. And so, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's awful. And um, but yeah, so even the cleanup work is there more efficient ways to do or safer ways to do the cleanup work? I remember there were some beaches that you can't go to that beach because uh, that has not been cleared yet. Yeah. Yes. So how would you have that? For these guys, yeah. So um, first thing I want to do is do all the jobs. I want them to like have me go around and show me how to do all the, the tasks and get to know the workers there and just understand the what, what they're actually doing. Um, second thing is um, work with the management. So the owner is was um, from the United States and he went went there through Peace Corps, I believe, and saw the opportunity. So work with him on where are your challenges and then try to match up what I saw and observed with what struggles they're having. What's the, where's the bottleneck? Is it that they can't sell enough? They have the manufacturing capacity, that, but they don't have enough sales? Or is it that they have enough sales and they can't keep up? And if they can't keep up, where in the, that process, if you saw, where is the bottleneck? Is it getting the trees from the farmers to the, to the facility? Is it uh, cutting the, the leaves up? Is it the um, x-ray cutout, the laser cutting process? Is it the graphic design screen printing process? You know, and, and look at it that way. And I think uh, originally they were looking at a new product line, but they said that won't be ready yet. So I'm, I, I don't know which of the other products they have. They have the business cards, they have the uh, wallets, and then um, they might be looking at another opportunity there. But So that's was gonna be my plan, and that's kind of what I explained um, but maybe take the first week and just get familiar and get my bearings a little bit with where I'm at uh, before I just jump in with throwing out ideas. Mm -hmm. 
I think that in, in the like inserting it in and it was grinding up <laughs> into the fibers? Yeah. That one? Okay, yeah. We, we just totally inserted stuff and it just sits down there. Huh. Right? But what I'm thinking is that the industrial engineers, I, I can't think now of a number of community groups that would be happy to have something like that mm -hmm. and to develop it. So the industrial engineers could now take those things and, you know, go through the process into actually helping groups to make it into businesses. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. people could be just naturally. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to afford that. And uh -huh. like I said, it's, it's hard to get there. So unless somebody from the local university or school had that training or background and had time to go work with them. Yeah, so I think it was, uh, I think they found that, hey, we could offer up uh, a place for someone to stay if they can get there. And I had enough frequent flyer miles that I didn't have to, I, I could use up all those to, to get there. So it sounded like it made it a good deal for me. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks for coming.